Hello, here on the sidelines of Corporate Governance Week 2016 at the Mandarin Orchard, we have our special guest from the Netherlands with us, Professor Eric Vermeulen, who is not only a professor of uh, business and uh, law at Tilburg University, but also is a uh, VP, Vice President and Head of um, uh, compliance at, of governance at um, at Philips Lighting, but you know the funny thing is that people tend to equate governance and compliance, don't they? But your your, your point earlier on today at uh, the conference was very much that we need a new model of governance, so that it's not always associated with compliance, isn't it? Oh, that's true. I don't think we uh, we need a new model. I think we have to uh, to to rethink the discussion about corporate governance. Uh, right now, when you mention corporate governance within a company, everybody thinks about compliance, and and we live in a world of like disruption, and 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 and. and fast innovation and, 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 and shorter uh, innovation cycles. So the, the, the business challenges of companies are completely different right now. And as soon as you come in, like, you know, I'm the head of governance and let's talk about compliance, people don't really like you. Uh, they want to move forward. So they basically have the question, how can you help me be business leaders, uh, help this company grow, help to create value for our stakeholders, investors, uh, consumers, everybody. So if we had to now rethink uh, governance, what should your title actually be? Head of Innovation Facilitation or something like that? I think Head of Governance is good, but it's, uh, it's basically uh, maybe, you know, Head of Value Creation, something like that. I think governance has, has many things to do with value creation. Uh, governance can, can give a heart and soul to the company. And, and bring it to the 21st century. As I mentioned today during the, uh, the presentation, uh, I think we have to talk about and think about the board composition, you know, who should be on the board. And uh, bringing it into the 21st century um, could mean that we need millennial specialists on the board. As I mentioned, uh, many companies now pay $20,000 per hour uh, to get advice on millennials. So why not having a millennial specialist on the board? But I think the most important thing is communication. Uh, I think within corporate governance and compliance, uh, we we just you know provide a lot of pages to the market because that's what we have to do, mm. and 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 interestingly, uh, the more information we give them in annual reports, the less we actually say about the company. There's no narrative. There's no story. And I think trust can be created by creating a narrative, creating a story. And uh, what some companies do, they have shareholder letters to the shareholder, where the CEO uh, writes a letter to the shareholders in a very engaged, personalized way. And that builds the trust we need. Some good examples are Warren Buffett's uh, letters or uh, Jeff Bezos' letters. And, and Google also, they, they basically adopt uh, Warren Buffett's model. And Warren Buffett is, is old, so you don't have to be very young in order to do this. And, and some others use uh, social media, like Twitter. And I know when, I, when you you go as a consultant to a company you say well your CEO should use Twitter they would probably say no 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 please don't because uh, it's too dangerous if he makes a mistake you know that will have an impact on the share price and we have to correct it because we corporate governance specialists we discipline the company right but that's not how you should view it you should basically this is the new way you should look at it like this is the new way so how can we use it to to engage with our stakeholders yes. which are like the consumers the investors etc and so, so um all of these things are obviously upon us anyway, but your point I think is also that because we now have completely new business models, such as hotel companies that don't own hotels and taxi companies that don't own taxis and so on, that this reform of governance that you talked about, to focus more on value creation and less on box checking, that reform is going to be forced upon us to some extent, isn't it? It's not, it's not going to be a choice anymore in the future. No, it's, it's not a choice. If you look at uh, the disruption that we see right now and, and how many startup companies actually disrupting big companies, I don't think we, ha we have a choice. Uh, the new business model will not be, you know, we have a closed company with like management and hierarchy and some formalities. Uh, no, the, the new form is, is about, you know, you, you need to have a, it's mission driven, uh, it's flat. It's inclusive, it has to be fluid. Basically, big companies become big ecosystems. And uh, as some say that maybe the huge companies in the future will have only two employees, right? A, a chief executive officer and a chief innovation officer. It is possible to do that. And, and to see it as an ecosystem where people, you know, employees come for like shorter assignments and, and then maybe go or stay with your company for another assignment. 
Um, there's a nice book written about it by Reid Hoffman, uh, the founder of LinkedIn, how, how the employer-employee relationship is actually changing. Uh, but also how you have to work as a big company with startups. So basically big companies become big ecosystems. And in order to, to get that going, in order to make all these things work, you need to have, you know, you need to communicate and you need to embrace new means of communication and also new ways and the content of the, uh, the, the things you communicate should change as well in order to create trust within this big ecosystem that will, um, that will be the only possible way for your big company to remain relevant is yeah. creating and embracing this ecosystem yes. thought. Thanks for communicating that to us at the conference this year. Okay, Professor Eric Vermeulen, and once again, you can go to other parts of this playlist to see other interviews here on the sidelines of the 7th Corporate Governance Week 2016 at the Mandarin Orchard in Singapore.